Merry Christmas, everybody. So I'm here, it's about as far south as I can go. If you look, kind of see through there, there's the Statue of Liberty. Got Ellis Island over there, it's as far south as I can go. I'm gonna wait for my friend here and we're gonna leave very soon. It's a beautiful day today. Merry Christmas, follow if you enjoyed. So I brought with me two water bottles, a portable charger, and let's go, let's be off. I filmed this on Christmas day, so that's why I'm saying Merry Christmas. And we're starting in Battery Park and we're going all the way to the north of Manhattan, the Henry Hudson Bridge. And Battery Park had a lot of construction, so we kind of got lost getting out of the park, but that's okay. We're figuring it out. We're gonna get it. What's up? We made out the park. This is my boy Ethan, joining me for the start. So our first destination after Battery Park is gonna be the World Trade Center. You can see it in the distance over right. there. Let's go up uh, some stairs. I, I kinda always like the, these like slightly shorter stairs. Yeah. <laughs> So we like the stairs going up to this plaza, and this turned out to be a plaza overlooking the World Trade Center Memorial. I'm sorry for your loss. If you lost anybody in the World Trade Center, I really do like this memorial because it's really peaceful, it's beautiful, and nothing will be built on top of it. It's really nice, and this is a memorable part of New York City, and it's a beautiful place. There's a Greek Orthodox church here, too, that was having mass. And after going down the stairs the other side, we got to the memorial. At stop one, so far, we found Taurus. It's crazy. How you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Close by there, there's the Oculus, and let's head towards Washington Square Park. Yo, Ethan's heading out. See ya. See ya. Good luck. Ethan left right before I got to house. So we've made it to House and Treat, and it's about 11, and we're gonna get to Washington Square Park soon. All right. Say goodbye to Ethan a little bit ago. It'll be good. It's also a really nice day, so a lot of people are out, it seems like. Not just the tourists that I was expecting. I have no clue what that building is, but it looks really nice. And here we are getting to Houston Street. Houston Street is really important because it's effectively street zero. It divides the numbered streets to the grid above and the lower streets, which are worded and are much more confusing. So that's why Houston Street is so important. This is Washington Square Park. Washington Square Park is the big center right above Houston Street. Usually there's a lot of people selling things and creating content and it's a- I have to say so far, I'm a little surprised with how many places have been open. It's not just been chains. There's been some shops and some restaurants as well. Going north past Washington Square Park, we're just gonna be on Fifth Avenue and we're gonna get to Union Square. Union Square is a very central location. It's very popular for protests, meetings, anything. There's also a bunch of chess players and there's just a lot of businesses surrounding it. Usually it's very busy. But right now is right after the holiday market got taken down. It ended on Christmas. So now there's nobody there. And I pretty much had the entire park to myself. Even got to play a little hopscotch. There's also really nice spots on the ground for you to take pictures and maybe get some good karma at. They got good luck spots, kissing spots, basically anything you can think of. And now we're going to go up Broadway to get to the next location on our tour, Madison Square Park. Now that I have all the good karma I need, well, you can't really have enough. Here I am in Madison Square Park, and they got a Shake Shack in this park. Uh, so that's nice. In Lower Manhattan, it's really easy just to link a path through the plazas and parks. Here I am approaching Midtown, and you can see the Empire State Building in the background. The Empire State Building is located near Koreatown, so if you're going to visit there, definitely go pick up some Korean food. And then check out Herald Square. Herald Square is where the big Macy's is. It's the end of the Thanksgiving parade. And again, it's another central location where there's a lot of action that's going to be happening. If you're visiting New York and have the time, you can do Midtown, which is like the Empire State Building and Times Square, all in one day. As you do get towards Midtown, things start getting more crowded again. The lines that are going to be outside some of these popular tourist restaurants get really, really long. I love people watching, so I'm always interested in what people are online for and whether I think it's worth it. Usually, I don't get food from there. This is Bryant Park. Bryant Park is one avenue over from Times Square, and it contains an ice skating rink that is free as long as you bring your own skates or you can rent skates, and it has another holiday market. It's again another nice park that you can congregate in. These landmarks make really good spots for finding people or to start your plans at. Now let's head on over to Times Square. I'm not the biggest fan. Most people who live in New York aren't going to enjoy Times Squares and there's many reasons for this. First you have the amount of people and the people who are there are tourists so they're going to be taking their time, walking slowly, seeing everything. Also there are a lot of people that are hustling and so you will get harassed when you are there. I really like the street performers, so these guys over here, they got quite the crowd, it's amazing. I've seen a lot of people set up rotating videos, and they seem kind of fun and could be a good memory. But be careful to avoid the people dressed up in cops. They will come up to you, present themselves as if they're trying to get a picture with your family, and then once you take a picture with them, they're going to press you for a lot of money. I'm not trying to knock anybody's hustle, but to me, it's an evasion of space and privacy. I'd much rather give money to street performers, and if you see street performers you like, please do put money in the bucket. 
finally we made it out of Times Square. We're at Columbus Circle, which has a holiday market and has a bunch of food trucks. Majority with our Nathan's food truck, because I think it's like a New York thing. But really, if you want New York food, just go get a slice of dollar pizza. I'm so much happier to be in Central Park. It is one of the few green places we really have in the city. And if I can ever escape to there, I will be there. There are beautiful views of lower Manhattan, and it's nice just to get lost and wander inside the park. I do feel really bad for the horses having to walk on concrete the whole time, but otherwise it's nice. Now that there's not as many people as well, I can just record the sounds of the city, which I love. I mean, maybe not the honking cars and the bridge traffic, but just being outside, hearing the hubbaloo of the people, I really, really like that. In fact, it's difficult for me to sleep without some sort of noise after growing up in the city. I'm no historian, but I wanted to look up when the park was built, and it was built in 1858. And it's crazy to see how much the city has changed, and there still is this escape for you to go to. Also, one of my favorite things about walking on Christmas Day is that I saw a bunch of people in matching onesies that were so cute. Heading out of the park on 79th Street, I'm right next to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Now, obviously, it's not going to be open on Christmas Days, but I do love some nice steps where I can sit down and rest for a little bit. And they had more food trucks if I wanted food. This circular museum next to it, when I'm back in the park, is the Guggenheim Museum. Highly suggest taking a visit there if you're in New York. This big body of water in the park is the Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis Reservoir. I hope I said that right. I've never walked around this path. I don't walk on the east side of the park very often. There's a big difference between the southern part, which is a lot more touristy, as it's more central to Times Square and Midtown. Alright, so we just got past Route 100. I'm in the park, so about that. And we're going to keep going. Got to get to, I think, like 207th or something. Let's do it. Just a little check-in. I've never walked fully, actually, from the southern end to the northern end of the park before, even though I've grown up in New York City. It definitely is really easy to get lost in Central Park, though, and I do it all the time, especially in the parts that I don't know. But I do love exploring all the different paths, seeing all the wildlife. Now, I know New York City wildlife might be just pigeons and squirrels, but I do enjoy watching them as well. There's even a little waterfall that I found while walking around, and now we're getting to the end of the park. We made it out the park. And I'm in the north end. We're on Malcolm X and Central Park North. Let's go. So here we are on the northern side of Central Park. And compared to the glitz and glamour of Columbus Circle and Times Square, there really isn't that much here. It feels like a different world. The streets were a lot more barren. I mean, it's a lot more residential. This is where a large amount of New Yorkers live, and it's a major part of Manhattan. I'm not sure if there's more streets north or south of the park, but Manhattan does not end at the end of Central Park. On 125th Street, I met my sister Catherine at Marcus Garvey Park. I really like the views that surrounded the park, especially on the hike up to the hill to the bell tower, and they host events, and there's a Little League field that I think I played a game on at some point. Coming down out of the park, we're going to be at 125th Street in Harlem, one of the busiest streets in Harlem, and it's home to the legendary Apollo Theater, famous for the amateur nights at the Apollo. Well, that, and it's been around since 1914, and it's played host to some of the most famous musicians. What's up? About halfway point, check in. I'm at Manos Restaurant, eating some oxtail. Uh, I've got about two and a half hours to still go until I get to the top of Manhattan, so stay tuned. I'm going to post videos of each part either today or tomorrow, but we're getting there. Yeah. So this is my plate. I got oxtails, rice, potatoes, and What's mac and up? Cheese. So we're back on the road after lunch. Catherine's joined me. There she is. And the thing is going to take an hour and 54 minutes. Right now it's 3.20, so should be done around 5? That sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty good. And I'm going to hopefully find a smoke shop to get a celebratory uh, jet. That'll be good. Focus, Adam. we still got a long ways to go. We buy the CCNY campus right now. That's on 145th. That's where I went to high school. And Catherine was really enthralled by all the red brick that was in the brownstones. And it was really nice. You can see staying in Manhattan how much the streets really change. And this was actually Alexander Hamilton's house. That's pretty cool. Bye. <laughs> Yeah, I know we both took videos of us saying goodbye to each other, but we said an actual goodbye after that. And now we're going to keep going on St. Nick. So if you can see in the distance over there, that's Yankee Stadium. And the thing that Manhattan does, it really tapers near the top and at the bottom. So even though that is the Bronx over there, I'm still not at the very top of Manhattan. That's only 161st Street. I still got to get to about 207. So let's keep walking up St. Nick. I used to get my hair cut on 170th Street in St. Nick, and I absolutely loved the place. However, it's an hour and a half each way from my house and eventually just wasn't worth it when I wasn't going to school in the neighborhood. All right, we're on 173rd and St. Nick, just about starting to get dark, so we'll see where I finish. I'm gonna make it at least to 207th Street, so we'll see. 
The reason why I was kept talking about 207th Street is because I thought that was the last stop on the A train, which I thought was the last stop in Manhattan. Turned out there's a 214th Street stop on the one train, so I was wrong the entire time. These neighborhoods up here in Spanish Harlem, Washington Heights, and as you get farther up towards Inwood, it's very residential. There's not a lot of stuff to see until you get up to the Met Cloisters. That's not to say there's ton not tons of life in these neighborhoods and they are in amazing places. It's just there's not as much for you to go out of your way and see. Maybe to get a haircut. So I went past the cloisters and here we are getting to Inwood Hill Park. I've never been here before. It was actually really nice. And this is going to be the last spot on my journey. So take it away, Adam. All right, so there are no lights. So it's going to be interesting. Can't go that way. Our path's closed. Okay. All right, last little bit. Got half a mile left. Walking up these stairs. I don't even know where the fuck I'm going at this point. Let's see. I'm sorry for cursing, but I was just really confused and I was tired. I just want to finish my walk and get to the bridge. All right, so there's no lights, no nothing. I mean, you can barely see my face at this point. So let's see. I might just turn around pretty soon. So the cars ended up being too loud for me to talk over, but here I am going up the last and kind of the only hill I had to walk up this entire time. That was one of the best things about walking all of Manhattan is that it was very horizontal. There wasn't much vertical, so my breath was really good. And my legs, my knees didn't hurt too bad. I mean, they still hurt. I was tired, but it wasn't as bad as it could be. So let's go these final few steps to get to the Henry Hudson Bridge. The Henry Hudson Bridge connects Manhattan to the Bronx. It's the end of the West Side Highway, which is the highway that goes on the west side of Manhattan. Seeing all the lights again was amazing, though, because as you saw previously, it was dark. See the cars now. This is pretty good. There's the water. What is up? This is Adam, and I'm standing on the Henry Hudson Bridge. We did it. We went from the very bottom battery park all the way to the top. And yeah, was it worth it? Probably not, but I like it. And I got a nice view of the water, even though I can't see anything. But we fucking did it. Well, all the way from the bottom to the top. Now I gotta turn around. This isn't gonna go well. So I still had to turn around and walk back to the train, so a few more steps to go. Here's my travel. I promise I started from the bottom. It was 17 miles, and I took 45,000 steps. All right, so I gotta walk out of this park. It's 520. I started around 10, so it took me about seven hours and 20 minutes to get all the way up here. Uh, it was nice. It was a good walk. Uh, my legs are hurting, but my wind is really good. Uh, there are no lights where I'm at, so this is sketchy. I don't wanna get to a spot with lights. Uh, yeah. All right, let's do it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm going to Brazil in one week. I'm going to be posting lots of shorts and videos from there. Also, where would be the first place you go to in Manhattan? Please comment.